ultimately to bring all of those responsible to justice, whatever form that takes. It's clear now, as it was uh, on December 7, 1941, the United States is at war. The question is with whom? In December of 41, we knew. Uh, today, we really don't. They don't know now, but U.S. intelligence officials say they believe they soon will. David Ensor, CNN, Washington. Now, key to all of this is the fact that uh, Osama bin Laden has been in Afghanistan. Af Afghan officials, the ruling Taliban there, have said unequivocally that they have been warned by Washington that they will be held responsible if it was determined that Osama bin Laden took actions, uh, did terrorist acts uh, against the United States or its interests. Now, joining us from Kabul for more on this story is Nick Robertson. He's joining us by video phone. Nick, what is the latest from there? Well, Jim, certainly there is a lot of apprehension within uh, senior Taliban ranks here in Afghanistan, not only in Kabul, but in their spiritual capital, Kandahar, about 300 miles south of here. We also know this morning in Kabul that the United Nations agencies here in Kabul are preparing uh, very likely to pull out from here. Local staff are being paid their salaries, and there will probably likely be a skeleton staff of UN officials left in the city and in other cities around the country. We also know that some of the smaller non-governmental organizations, aid groups here in the city, are also preparing to pull out 10 German groups we are told we'll pull out four of them today. Last night, of course, the Taliban moving very swiftly. Foreign Minister Wakil Ahmed Mutawakil uh, brought, talking to journalists saying that they were not responsible, Afghanistan was not responsible, that they uh, condemned terrorism in all its forms, and they said that uh, Osama bin Laden couldn't be responsible for what had happened. Mullah Omar, the spiritual leader of the country, issuing a statement very quickly as well, Jim, indicative of the apprehension that uh, Possibly Afghanistan could be uh, a place where retribution might be sought. But certainly uh, Mullah Omar's statement, Osama bin Laden, he said, could not be responsible. This uh, type of terrorism, he said, was too great for one man, Jim. Still, the, uh, the feeling persists that uh, there is going to be uh, some kind of retribution by the United States, and we could see uh, the uh, reaction coming there from Taliban officials, how many of them in the government are what you might consider supporters of Osama bin Laden? That is, they agree with him, his philosophy. Well, the Taliban have given sanctuary to Osama bin Laden, they say, for his war efforts in expelling the 1980s Soviet occupation of Afghanistan, a 10-year occupation. Osama bin Laden came here and fought with the Mujahideen. And for that reason, when Osama bin Laden came to the Taliban in 1996 looking for a safe haven, uh, they felt honor bound under Afghan culture, they say, to give him a place to stay. Certainly, Osama bin Laden is a figurehead, not only in Afghanistan, but in this part of the world. He is somebody uh, that uh, some young followers of Islam might look towards as a particular type of leader that they behold. Certainly, as the Taliban prosecute their war to gain the control of the last 5% of Afghanistan, a civil war in the north of the country here, having an ally like Osama bin Laden to help rally more troops to their cause this is a war of attrition, the civil war here, Jim. Many troops uh, die on the front line. Frontal assault, troops driving across open plains, being mowed down. The Taliban do need uh, a lot of troops here to fight this war. Osama bin Laden uh, and his supporters would certainly uh, be a good rallying point for Taliban uh, in trying to recruit uh, people to, to that army. And certainly uh, we have seen this uh, in some instances, Jim. Nick, there have been reports that Osama bin Laden is calling uh, Muslims from around the world to join uh, his forces in Afghanistan to support the country, even export out of Afghanistan some of the same fundamentalist uh, beliefs that he holds. Do you see evidence of that? Well, Jim, two years ago, we were traveling in the north of Afghanistan in territory held by the Northern Alliance, who were the last opposition holding out against the Taliban. There, we were taken to a jail and shown prisoners, they told us, were from 
uh, mostly from Pakistan, one gentleman from Britain, and several others, uh, some from China, some from uh, other countries. These people told us that they had come to learn how to fight uh, in training camps in Afghanistan and had then gone on to the front lines to fight uh, in the war uh, against the Northern Alliance, and that's why they were captured when the front lines changed. Uh, these people have told us other uh, supporters, uh, other fighters, other terrorists, some people might call them, uh, frontline fighters, the Taliban would call them, told us that they'd come to Afghanistan to get training in, uh, in fighting techniques, in techniques of explo using explosives, in techniques uh, of using uh, weapons, rocket launchers, machine guns, etc. They'd then taken those skills to the front line for the Taliban, but they said they were also uh, quite capable of taking those skills and exporting them back to their own countries of origin. Certainly the predominance uh, of the uh, people in that jail we found were mostly from Pakistan. And it has been well documented that the Taliban are able to draw ethnically from the Pashtun population in Pakistan uh, a, quite a considerable degree of support. And there is a, a wealth of evidence that would point to the fact that there are many young people that would come from not from Pakistan to assist the Taliban in their fight in Afghanistan. All right, our thanks there to Nick Robertson, one of the uh, few correspondents in Afghanistan that uh, is at the moment one of the focus, uh, one of the focal points of attention. Colleen. All right, Jim, we do want to show you some more fresh pictures that are just coming into CNN now. This is tape, but it's it's quite fresh from the area in Lower Manhattan uh, around the World Trade Center. Our crews out there busy tonight, uh, getting us, giving us a look at the search and rescue efforts which go on. You can see the really the utter devastation there, just twisted pieces of metal and rubble. Take a look at that panning up shot. Let's just listen to this for a while. You can see still plenty of, of steam and smoke in that area. Let's, let's have a listen here. Most of that damage on the ground, of course, caused when the two towers literally disintegrated. They burned and, and fell to the ground one after the other, just spewing rubble all over the place. I want to also show you some tape um, that we just got in a couple of hours here. This is exclusive, a reverse angle of the second plane hitting the tower. Let's look. That's just a frightening shot. Officials saying it's the fire that, that the, the fire that that caused that that caused the buildings to disintegrate relatively quickly. You can imagine both very large planes carrying a lot of fuel, uh, literally pumping that fuel right into those two towers. These planes fully loaded with fuel. Yep. Every one of these planes was hijacked. All four of them was bound for a transcontinental flight, meaning they were fully loaded. Bombs, literally uh, petrol bombs. Uh, that were plowed there into the World Trade Center and then also, of course, into the Pentagon. All right, and also uh, late in the day uh, yesterday, we also saw some, some naval movements, some movements of naval ships, and, and CNN's Jean Meserve is in Washington right now. She's got some new information about this. Jean? That's right, Colleen. We talked earlier today about the movement of forces along the East Coast. Now we have information about the movement of naval assets on the West Coast. They are being moved to protect the West Coast and also Hawaii, according to Navy officials. Let me tell you what's being deployed. An aircraft carrier, two guided missile cruisers, five guided missile destroyers, five guided missile frigates, a rescue and salvage ship, and a fleet oiler. All of those uh, vessels based on the West Coast. Once again, those being deployed along the West Coast and some further out, one presumes, to protect Hawaii. Earlier today, a couple of aircraft carriers left Norfolk, Virginia. They were deployed along with some other ships with the intention of protecting the East Coast. The aircraft carriers in particular, it was hoping, could monitor and help control the airspace over both New York and Washington, D.C. And another note, the USS Enterprise, which uh, had been relieved of duty in the Persian Gulf, has now been told 
it must stay there. So that's the latest on military assets and how they are being put in place early this morning. Uh, also here in Washington, another item. Um, we have seen that the entrances to three of Washington's major tourist attractions have been closed to vehicular traffic. The Washington Monument, the Jefferson Memorial, and the Lincoln Memorial have now all been blocked effectively to vehicles. Uh, unclear whether they have also been blocked to pedestrian traffic since at this hour of the morning there is none for us to monitor. This does not come as a surprise. There is a state of emergency here in the District of Columbia. Uh, much of the city was cordoned off for portions of the day, certainly around the U.S. Capitol today. Blocks and blocks were closed. Vehicles had to divert uh, for blocks to get around that building. So there are a few of the updates from the city itself. Across the river in Virginia at the Pentagon, rescue efforts do continue at this hour. You can see there a live picture of what's going on. Plans are for in the morning to peel away part of the facade of this building and go in and do a thorough search. Arlington County officials have told us that the, the toll in, at the Pentagon could go as high as 800. 100 to 800, the range of people missing at the Pentagon. So that is the latest here from Washington. Now back to you in Atlanta. All right, Jean Meserve, thank you very much. Condolences have been pouring in uh, from around the world tonight. Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon has expressed his condolences to the American people. Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat has also condemned the attacks. For more now on the reaction in the Middle East, we are joined from Jerusalem by Gerald Kessel. Gerald. Good morning, Colleen. And uh, for Israelis, it's uh, uh, as they watch the horror unfolding in uh, New York and uh, Washington, the equation is horrifyingly simple. Uh, not so much just an attack on America as Israelis perceive it, but somewhat in, uh, akin to this headline that we have here in the uh, leading Israeli newspaper, which talks of a world in shock, because the way the Israelis see it is that this is uh, a question, a day of reckoning, a day to be stand up, uh, to stand up and be counted on which side anyone is in the battle, as they say, against terrorism, for or against. And uh, there are no neutrals, say Israeli leaders. This this is a day in which uh, it should be made plain that there's no place for terrorists to have a haven or to seek a sanctuary. The fight against terror is an international struggle of the free world against the forces of darkness who seek to destroy our liberty and our way of life. I believe that together we can defeat these forces of evil. At this most difficult hour, all Israelis stand as one with the American people. Our hearts are with you, and we are ready to provide any assistance at any time. The government of Israel has declared a day of mourning tomorrow as we bow our heads and share in the sorrow of the American people. Along with the uh, day of uh, mourning, Israelis have been asked to uh, uh, donate blood, and people have been uh, uh, going to uh, 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 medical relief centers to donate blood, which will be sent along with the emergency rescue squads. The Israelis have uh, a couple of such squads who have specialized in uh, uh, handling uh, incidents such as the uh, collapse of buildings, like when, uh, as they did when they sent uh, a, a squad to uh, Nairobi after the uh, bombing of the U.S. Embassy there. Israel also taking its own uh, security precautions, the airspace closed to all foreign aircraft or other than those that have Israeli security clearance, the Israeli Air Force on high alert, and other uh, uh, efforts to make sure that security has been tightened. On the Palestinian side, the Palestinians, like leaders throughout the Arab world, have expressed uh, con condemnation uh, and have expressed their solidarity with the, uh, with the American people in, this, uh, in the hour of trial. Here's what uh, Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat had to say to CNN last night. The Palestinian people and I were shocked. 
بالألم العميق من جراء هذا الحدث الخطير. We felt 